In this video, we will review our right triangle trigonometry. The three basic trig functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. If you have a right triangle, um, the hypotenuse is always going to be across from the 90 degree angle. Now, if you pick one of the other angles, like theta here, uh, across from that angle is called the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is called the adjacent leg. So, when I say uh, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, I'm picturing this in my mind. The magical word SOKOTOA will help you remember these three important definitions. Of course, the SO part means sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, the CA part cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA, tangent, is opposite over adjacent, SOKOTOA. We'll get back to SOKOTOA later. Now, there are three possibilities in terms of how the equations um, will wind up looking. Sometimes the variable will be in the denominator. Uh, when the variable is in the denominator, we swap. Um, I'll show you what that means in a second. Sometimes the variable is in the numerator. In that case, we multiply. Uh, sometimes the variable is inside the trig function, and in that case, we do the inverse. Okay, so when I say swap, I mean we're going to swap these two. Okay, we're going to put x here, and we're going to put sine of 18 here. Uh, so that will give me x is equal to 37 over uh, sine 18. Okay, so we just put that in the calculator. So this is going to be 37 over sine 18. So that is 119.735 got to round up. Okay, now when I say multiply, uh, I'm talking about multiplying by the denominator. So here I would multiply both sides by 37. Okay, so that would mean that 37 sine 18 is equal to x. So this is what gets put in the calculator. So 37 sine 18. So that is 11.434, got to round up. Okay, and finally, inverse. Inverse means that um, x will equal the inverse sine of 18 over 37. And this is what you put in your calculator. So, uh, let's see, can I move this over a little bit more? So I need to do the inverse sine of 18 over 37. So that is 29.10, hmm, got to round up, so 9 will round up to 10. So instead of 09, I will have 10 here. So 29.110. All right, so here's where SOKOTOA comes in. Um, First of all, across from the 90 degree angle, that is the hypotenuse. Now, this is the angle that has been identified. That's what we're looking for. 
Across from the angle will always be the opposite leg. Right next to the angle will be adjacent. So um, I think about Sokotoa. So -ka toa. Which one of these sides is not doing anything? The hypotenuse is doing nothing. There's no value here, and it's not a variable that we are looking for. So hypotenuse is useless. That means we won't be using uh, this function because of the h. See the h right there? Won't be using that either. So that means we'll be doing tangent. So you always write the trig function of the angle. So tangent of x equals opposite over adjacent. So in this case, that's going to be 24 over 39. Now, this is the situation where the variable is inside the trig function. That's when we do the inverse. So that means x will equal the inverse tangent of 24 over 39. And you just put that in your calculator. So inverse tangent of 24 over 39. So that's 31.608, got to round up. OK, let's do the same thing here. Across from the 90 degree angle will be the hypotenuse. Here's the angle that we have. Across from the angle will be the opposite leg right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. So if I think about good old Sokotoa, I ask myself which one of these sides is not doing anything. The opposite leg is doing nothing. There's no value there, there's no variable that we are looking for. So I'm gonna throw this out because of the O, and I'm gonna throw this out because of the O. Opposite leg is doing nothing. That leaves cosine. Okay, uh, cosine, and we always put the angle, cosine of 39 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be x over 24. When the variable is in the numerator, that's when you multiply both sides by the denominator. Okay, that gets x by itself. So 24 cosine 39 goes in the calculator. 24 cosine 39. So that's 18.652. Got to round up. All right, one more time. Across from the 90 degree angle will always be the hypotenuse. This is the angle that we've got. Across from the angle is the opposite leg. Right next to the angle is the adjacent leg. Think about Sokotoa. Which one of these sides is doing nothing? The adjacent leg is doing nothing. That's the A, so that's useless and this is useless. So that means we will use the sine function. So we will say sine of 39 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 24 over x. When the x is in the denominator, that's when you swap these. So you have x is equal to 24 over sine 39. And you just put that in your calculator. Eighteen point one three six. Uh huh, not eighteen. Thirty eight point one three six.
Number three relies on a rule that we just memorized. Anytime you have a pair of complementary angles, um, the sine of one angle is going to equal the cosine of the other angle. Or the cosine of one angle is going to equal the sine of the other angle. So the sine of P should equal the cosine of Q. All right, so that's why the cosine of Q should also be 11 over 61. The cosine of P should equal the sine of Q. So that's why the sine of Q should also equal 60 over 61. Um, now, a similar rule tells us that um, the tangent of one angle and the tangent of the other angle are reciprocals of each other. So if tangent of P is 11 over 60, then the tangent of Q should be 60 over 11. All right, it's just a useful trick to memorize. Now, M and N are complementary angles. So, like we just said, um, these should be reciprocals of each other. So, the t uh, if the tangent of M is 6 over 11, then the tangent of N should be 11 over 6. The sine of 12 degrees should has, have the same value. Okay, well, this, this is a little curveball. Um, in the previous two problems, they, they just said these two angles are complementary. This time, they're giving us one of the angles. Um, and they're not saying the word complementary, but um, we're still using the same pattern. If the sine of one angle is going to equal the cosine of another angle, then these two angles have to be complementary. So complementary means adding up to 90. So if I subtract the first angle from 90, then that will give me the complementary angle. All right, so 12 and 78 are complementary angles. So this now, this makes sense. The sine of one angle will have the same value as the cosine of the other angle because they are complementary. And we made sure of that. Solving a right triangle means finding all missing sides and missing angles. So, um, it would be very easy to find this missing angle right here because we already have two out of three angles. So we could use the fact that um, all of this uh, will add up to 180. Or, since it's a right triangle and we already have 90 degrees here, that means that these other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees as well. So that's what I usually do. I just look at the two acute angles I know they have to add up to 90, so I just subtract from 90. Um, so 90 minus 42 should give me the other angle. Okay, so if I simply go 90 minus 42, then that's 48. So the measure of angle F is 48 degrees. Now, um, if I want to find any of these other things, I'm just going to put an X on there and uh, solve it like we usually do. So, for example, DE. If I want to find that, I'll just put an X right here. Okay. Now, across from the 90 degree angle uh, is the hypotenuse. Okay. Now, this is the angle that we were given. Across from that angle is, uh, we will call that the opposite leg. Right next to the angle, we will call that the adjacent leg. So if we think about Sokotoa, and then look to see which one of these sides is not doing anything right now. The hypotenuse is doing nothing. We're not given a value, and we're not looking for the value. So see the H's here and here? That means we're not going to use sine or cosine we will use tangent. So we will say tangent of that 42 
is equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's 25 over x. When the variable is in the denominator, that's when you swap. And so you're going to get x is equal to 25 over tangent 42. OK, so 25 over tangent 42. So that's 27.765. So that is DE. Now, if I want to find EF, I will do the exact same thing. OK, um, so let's see, EF. Just for fun, I'll use a different variable this time. So this is, uh, I'll call this y. Since I'm still using the same angle, this is still opposite, this is still adjacent, this is still the hypotenuse. OK, but now um, what's changing is the side that's not doing anything for us. OK, so Sokotoa again. Now, this time, it's the adjacent side that's not doing anything. So I'm going to throw out everything that has an A in it. Adjacent is no good this time. So this time, we're going to use the sine function. All right, I'm going to try to squeeze it in over here. So I'm going to have the sine of 42. Uh, and that's opposite over hypotenuse. So that'll be 25 over y. And again, when the variable is in the denominator, that's when you swap these. So this will be y is equal to 25 over sine 42. Whoops, that's not the calculator. 25 over sine 42. So 37.362. So that's EF. And there we have found all the missing sides and all the missing angles. So we solved the triangle. OK, one of these blanks can be filled in without using sine, cosine, or tangent. Which is it? Oh, hmm. I think we already did everything that they're about to ask us to do now. Um, well, it was the measure of angle F. OK, which one is it and why? Because we can just subtract from 90. OK. Now using sine, cosine, and or inverse sine, cosine, tangent uh, to help you fill in the rest. Well, that's what we, that's what we did. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.